Hello, and thank you for coming to my presentation. Right now, we discuss uh, about the problems of storage and file structure for very long-term preservation. Uh, what mean very long-term preservation? It's 100, uh, 200, 500 or more years. Uh, because uh, right now we are in a situation that uh, sometimes it's happening that the physical object that we digitize lasts much longer than the, uh, his digital copy. So uh, right now I will not insult uh, our public with uh, uh, details about how important is audiovisual archiving and how much uh, data it generates. So we'll skip this. Uh, um, Skip this slide. Uh, we only talking uh, about the storage and file structure, which is the two sub problem of the main problem uh, of the very long term preservation. And we begin with the storage. Storage characteristics. Uh, you see the record density, record speed, record endurance, and errors. It's bit error rates and uh, measurement units. Uh, it's you will see that. Uh, those uh, units are very connecting, uh, very connected between them. So right now, the beginning of storage, beginning of storage is very long time ago. It's begin with very slow uh, writing speed, uh, and but instead it lasts more than 2,500 years. Some Egyptian writings are 3,000 years long, and they still exist, can be readable. It means that they have very long uh, endurance. Uh, how we uh, how we calculated the bit rates? We just get uh, how much uh, bits can contain uh, one letter or one hieroglyph. Uh, how quick it can be written, and then we calculate uh, the speed and the uh, density. Then follow the. Papyrus, papyrus. Oh, I don't know how it's pronounced. It, with endurance near uh, thousand years, and uh, speed not so fast, uh, twelve to twenty-four. Then print on paper that uh, little bit revolutionized the uh, uh, data storage. It's already have endu endurance of six hundred years and speed more than four um, four um, hundred eighty bits. And relatively recently, it's a photo plaque with endurance, with a holographic plaque. Uh, here I want to mention that the uh, photographic plaque is maybe the most, uh, contain most density uh, storage medium. Uh, because uh, if you want to do holographic images, uh, you need to hold 6,000 uh, points per millimeter. Please, not millimeter, not inch. It's a very uh, high density. And in a given moment, there was an idea to using the holographic uh, plaque and holographic uh, tape for the long-term uh, storage of uh, density uh, data. Then standard magnetic tape and other, you, you know already this. And let's come to today. Today, there is a hard disk, which is very high density, very high speed, but lasts two, three years maximum. Optical standard disk, which is 30 years at best case, and uh, relative good density. There is uh, M disk uh, that claim to be with endurance more than 100 years, and of course LTO. Uh, if you observe it, some interesting as faster uh, record speed is and as uh, bigger density endurance get low because this is the sides of one triangle, where one side is speed, one side is density, one side is endurance. And uh, at least at this moment, you cannot have all those three in the best way. It means that if you have uh, good density and good speed, you cannot have good endurance. If you have good endurance, you cannot have uh, uh, good speed and something like that. So at this moment, we have this. What is the possible future? Uh, maybe you heard about Digital Dilemma. It was raised by the AMPAS, uh, which is giving the Oscars, and uh, American Society of Cinematographers. And uh, this Digital Dilemma uh, talk about uh, how quick is uh, digital obsolescence, uh, digital file obsolescence. And they first uh, time observed that this is two problems. One is the storage. It means that uh, the storage media itself 
Um, and another is file structure. Uh, I give you an example that this uh, September I was in a big studio in Paris, and they say that they can't anymore uh, read uh, uh, their files from 2000, from year 2000, uh, not because of storage, but because the file itself uh, was no more readable. So what is the future? Uh, this is projected future. It's a DNA record. There was uh, made a lot of uh, testing of that. Uh, some people are very happy, and other people not so happy. It's true that we not changed it too much since last 10 year, 10,000 years. It means that this is maybe stable copy. But it's not stable of, of the sense we understand. It means that uh, it has his own system. So I personally not consider DNA a good. Uh, and anyway, it's very sensitive to the heat, for example. Uh, the next one is for recent recording, uh, also recently promoted, uh, where uh, atoms, uh, molecules, was uh, recorded with different light, and they emit different uh, light. And it's a little bit more stable than uh, DNA, but still, uh, still unreliable uh, if we talk, uh, I said, about very long term preservation. Uh, everybody knows the pickle film digital. Generally speaking, good idea, but uh, even contemporary film last 100, uh, um, 150 years uh, if it's black and white on polyester uh, base. And uh, uh, in 2016, a genius from the Southampton University uh, invented the quartz disc. Quartz disc is uh, a disc of uh, quartz, uh, which is recorded with laser changing internal structure uh, in, 5D, um, in 5D mode. It means that with the one recording, the uh, five parameter that is changed and mean it's encoded five bits uh, per uh, right now uh, this is maybe the uh, I say last solution because it's a quartz disk it's mean that uh, he don't fear of uh, water don't fear of uh, high temperature has been tested 800 degree if you don't break with a hammer it can last 10,000 or more years because it's a quartz maybe one of the most stable material uh, the only problem right now is that uh, uh, recording speed, uh, first of all, is uh, very slow, and second of all, is a little bit expensive because they need uh, very short pulse laser. But still, as you see here, uh, Warner and Microsoft, five years after the gentleman from the Southampton uh, University, Professor Kazansky, invented that, finally they uh, begin to trial this, and what you see is the first recording of the movie, I forget the name movie, it was no safe, not so famous, but it's a first record of the movie for very long term preservation and it gets it get one uh, like that. Uh, and uh, because it's, it's intended uh, for the very long term, uh, on the beginning is right and just understandable, you can read by microscope on simplified English how the film frames is encoded. If somebody found after the thousand years, he not think, wow, what is that and how it's it. Uh, so um, uh, first test is already good. Uh, right now, finally, the banks and the film studios will invest in that in order to uh, make it so-so uh, affordable and with the so-so normal speed of writing. But uh, if this problem is resolved, I think we, we have the ideal um, ideal uh, storage for the extremely long term preservation they was uh, there was made uh, there was made uh, some emulation and claimed that this can last at least 10000 years at least because it's a quartz uh, it's a, um, changing very uh, very stable so uh, i think that in near future we will have a solution of the first component it is the um, digital uh, storage. So right now, unfortunately, we need temporary to use that until we have uh, this uh, solution. And I know that everybody from you know uh, this is the head edge and um, head paints. So the second question, file structure. 
uh, this question is subestimated, and right now people make standards that is current standards, and it's considered that uh, those current standards uh, can last uh, many time. But what is the problem? Our predecessor, our from Egypt, when they writing their writings, they not think that this can be readable after 3,000 years. For that reason, ever with the latest development in artificial intelligence, many writings has not been decoded yet. And this make from very low uh, tech civilization. So we, as a high tech civilization, we need to begin to think that our writings and our files and uh, whatever c must be readable in uh, many, many years. What this means? We, we, we need to do that in mind. So. If somebody in a thousand years find this one, by reverse, easy reverse engineering based on global principle of, of mathematics, he can easily understand what the structure of this file uh, is and what the file contains. I'm sure we subestimate that. Uh, so we make some tests uh, and uh, 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 we make some tests, and this is kind of very basic proposals uh, how the how the uh, uh, file can seems uh, the file uh, must uh, begin uh, with uh, header that explaining in uh, simplified uh, English with the science uh, what is the structure of the file as well the structure should be easily decodable it's mean that if you have only the basic uh, knowledge, uh, you uh, must understand. So KLV structure and uh, uh, XML structure is a good uh, example of, of things that uh, uh, can be readable without you have uh, idea how the file is structured. Uh, so this is some, I say, some proposal. And uh, this is some proposal of the file. But the file is still, uh, the, this problem is still not yet uh, uh, resolvable. So need uh, to think uh, on it. Uh, the color uh, should be in absolute uh, x, y, z coordinates, because nobody knows after 1,000 years which system, color reproduction system will exist. So uh, we need to be prepared. I know that it's very hard to guess what will happen after 1,000 years. So for that reason, uh, we use the very old engineering uh, principle, make it uh, simple stupid. Uh, I, I, I think you know this engineering principle. Uh, so, uh, uh, as I say, uh, MKV uh, is one good example that I think that with uh, a little uh, engineering efforts can be recognized. And uh, uh, we must think in that direction, uh, but uh, making it even more uh, easy uh, decodable. Uh, what we try to test is uh, mm, reverse engineering ability of the files. It means that you make some uh, file system, and then you ask uh, ChatGPT if he can understand uh, or chat GPT similar models if he can understand what the structure of the file is. So it can be some basic testing uh, of, uh, the, um, of how, uh, how the file system is easy engineering. So what is the conclusion? Uh, very long term preservation in must. Even more in current geopolitical situation where nobody knows where the First World War will begin and what's happened after that. So we must care about the uh, long and uh, strong uh, preservation. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, right now the density, speed, and endurance is uh, a triangle that at this moment we cannot uh, trick. But I think that uh, with development of Quasdic, we can do that and finally come storage. And uh, uh, many research is needed of the uh, file structure that is a uh, uh, long time, uh, how to say, a long time uh, able, long time viable, uh, because, uh, because I, I'm a member of the safety standardization committee. I propose to our colleagues, uh, let's think a little bit more on standards in order to be easy decodable without any um, documentation in the far future. But uh, I observed that uh, this problem is still not uh, at the order of the day. And uh, I think that at least archival community that uh, see far in the future, 
must care about that and uh, we must make a project uh, a viable file structure for a very long uh, preservation. Uh, problems are to be resolved, but at least we are on the right track. It means that we have some candidate for the uh, long uh, eternal storage and uh, what we have uh, is uh, a proposal, an idea how to make uh, easy um, is it decodable file structure that lasts a lot and uh, how to test it with the uh, help of the current uh, language model. So right now I'm in your disposition for uh, your question. Thank you. That was great. Thanks for your presentation. Does anyone have any questions for Radlisal? Thank you for your presentation. It's um, about the term and the quest for understand. When you said we can assume that any language can be understood, and then you said that there may be principles of math used to establish a common ground for understanding. Did I understand you correctly? Yes. How basic engineering principle that uh, alive from uh, ancient Egyptian. They are not changes too much engineering principle. They are developed but not changing. So I think that common sense, the maybe based on common sense and in, in the basic mathematics. Um, my, my question would go beyond that. If I have anything binary, like on television, very often, like oh, it's binary. It's the nature. Like it's it's understandable from aliens to humans. But if we don't know the word size of binary, so what, what would be your answer on, if I have binary code, but I don't know, like eight bits per byte, it's an arbitrary choice. If anyone finds a string of bits, uh, Yes, we need to, to make in an order that uh, basic on engineering principle, you can easily understand if you put different uh, number of points on uh, rows and when this appears some visible picture, let's say, you know, it's testing, it's testing. I'm a kind of specialist of reverse engineering, not big, but specialist. And I have some main principles and if something is based by, made by human, I early or later understand how it works, even there is, if there is no documentation at all. But if it's made at standard, so I militate for that. Make it on standard engineering principles in order our future generation to uh, easily uh, understand them. And not like ancient Egyptian that writing something that we still 3,000 years after we cannot uh, decode it. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, thanks, uh, Radoslav. So as you were talking about the storage media, I was thinking back about the presentation we heard yesterday about the um, persistible identifiers and the slide that, <coughs> excuse me, the slide that was about how the solutions that have been created for, I'm sorry, <coughs> for the persistent identifiers haven't really solved for the main threats that um, these URLs actually face. And I'm wondering if you have any reflections on um, you know, the, the efforts being put into creating these kinds of really enduring storage media and whether they actually address the main threats to the effective storage of archival content, which I think is maybe more along the lines of like institutional sustainability or like staffing and funding. Like who's actually going to maintain these places that these courts, you know, discs are going to be stored in and who's going to be working at those institutions, all, all those kinds of like other questions. Uh, uh I'm a little bit uh, more darkly uh, in dark disposition and I imagine that uh, in the future in thousand or more years somebody digging in the earth and find some vote vote v a o vote with some plaques and say wow what is that this is some science from our predecessor and uh, he found that and began to study that with the current technology in that time, which is microscope, uh, laser readings, whatever. And uh, then uh, they must say, wow, how, how clever was our uh, grand, grand, grand uh, uh, fathers and mothers. Uh, they left us this that we right now can be not too much easily understandable. So this is, uh, I, I imagine, that way uh, because if you see in the history, the Alexandrian library was destroyed, which yeah. considered something eternal. So 
No. Uh, you know that in Mexico, all the archive of Mexico was burned in 80, I don't know which one, 89 maybe, some. All the archive of Mexico was burned completely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And things like that happened. So uh, we saved that in uh, some vaults somewhere. And, and in, if somebody found them, we need to help them to decode that. So don't think that everything will work uh, in the way that right, uh, work right now. So human history claim that there are things that is changed very suddenly, very um, out impactfully, and you never know what's following. It's, but this is theory of futurology that we are not here to talk about futurology. We just uh, we just uh, want to uh, want to decide, want to make, want to study our small part of futurology. How to offer the digital audiovisual object to the um, to the um, further generation. That is only we not deal in photology. Thank you. We'll take a question from the live stream and then move on to our next presentation. Thank you. We have a question from Julio Castaño. Do you think that hard disk, magnetic or solid state offline could be considered an admissible preservation support for today? And he clarifies, I mean hard disk stored inside a box totally offline for years. Uh, not exactly. I give you an example from Bulgarian Film uh, Center. It's like uh, you have many institutions like that in the Europe. Uh, in a given moment, they accept the final result on uh, hard disk, the DCP of the movie of hard disk. Eh, it's happened that right now, half of the movies are not accessible. Hard disk is gone because even more if you lift uh, on the shelf hard disk, uh, it's broken and uh, it's very no, uh, very well known that the problem with the hard disk. So hard disk is the least uh, reliable uh, media and should be forbidden by law to be used in the archiving uh, community for an archiving purpose. It's my opinion. So it's, it's only temporary. It's mean that you copy to hard disk and then you copy to the last uh, resort uh, uh, storage. Great, thank you. Uh, could we get a Another round of applause, thanks. <laughs>